Good afternoon, folks. You'll have to pardon me for just a moment here because my, my producer, director, cameraman, cinematographer, whatever other name you want to assign to Joel on the other side of the camera here is being a bit of a clown this afternoon. <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, so welcome to, welcome to another one of our, our presentations uh, coming at you live today. Uh, live TV is always the best, doesn't it? Uh, but we are coming to you from the Woodcraft Spokane Facebook Live studio this afternoon. And uh, what we're going to talk about is something that we get a lot of questions on. Uh, and I thought that perhaps this might be a good opportunity to discuss these items um, in a little bit more detail for you. So essentially what we're going to talk about today will be the Morse taper, a Jacobs taper, threaded inserts, and spindle adapters. These are all things that we get a lot of questions about. They are mainly turning related, uh, but they do apply to uh, the drill press as well. So it is something that applies across the spectrum of machinery in the shop. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about will be the Morse taper. Now, Morse tapers come in a variety of sizes. They come in sizes from uh, a number zero all the way up to a number seven. Now, the ones that we typically use in woodworking, uh, in particular wood turning, are the number one and the number two Morse tapers. And I have an example of both of those here. So the smaller of the two, uh, this is the number one taper. Uh, this is actually off of a pen turning mandrel that would be used in a very small lathe. You will usually only find a Morse taper one in what is quite frankly correctly called a mini lathe. Now a mini lathe generally is going to have a vertical capacity of somewhere around seven inches and a vertical capacity of between 10 and 12 inches. So they are very small, hence the term mini lathe. Their spindle uh, is generally going to be three quarters of an inch in diameter and will have a thread count of usually 10 or 12 threads per inch. And we're going to kind of discuss uh, threads per inch and spindle sizes uh, in just a minute here as we get into some other aspects of uh, the tapers. Now on a Morse taper number one, the easiest way to tell if you have a machine at home, you're not sure if it's a number one or a number two taper, measure the opening that that taper is going to fit into. If it's roughly a half an inch, you need the Morse taper one. As you can see, the Morse taper two is slightly larger than the Morse taper one. It does essentially the same thing. It fits into either the headstock or the tailstock of your lathe. And if the opening that this is going to be inserted in is roughly three quarters of an inch in diameter, now you need the number two taper. That's the quickest and easiest way to tell if you have a machine that you're, you know, maybe you just picked up at uh, an estate sale or what have you. Uh, it's been sitting in your garage forever and ever. Uh, you don't have a manual for it anymore. You're just not quite sure what size that is. It measure across the opening that that taper will fit into. Again, three quarters of an inch for the Morse taper two, roughly a half inch for the Morse taper one. All right, do you have any questions on those? No questions, okay, all right. So moving on to what's referred to as a threaded insert. Now these things, I tell you what, these things come in so handy. I have a, a wood turner's chuck here. This happens to be the Supernova 2. And you can see that inserted into the back of the chuck is indeed a threaded insert. Now the beauty of the threaded insert is that now by simply changing this insert, I can use this chuck on multiple lathes because these inserts come in different sizes. This one is one inch by eight threads per inch. And we're talking about the, the female thread, if you will, the interior thread is the one inch by eight. The exterior or the male thread 
is designed to match the thread pattern on the back of the chuck. But again, by simply switching this insert for a different insert, it lets you use the same chuck on multiple lathes. That can be real handy in the case of somebody that has, like Joel does, for instance, Joel has a, a large Laguna lathe that has a one and a quarter by eight inch, or eight threads per inch, I'm sorry, one and a quarter by eight threads per inch spindle. And he has a small Rikon lathe that has a one inch by eight threads per inch. So he could have one chuck, two inserts, and use that chuck on both of his lathes. And I'm betting Joel has exactly that setup. And if you could hear his head shaking up and down, this is what he's doing on the other side of the camera. So he does indeed have that, and it does not surprise me. It gives you a lot more versatility. Some chucks do come with a, a what they call a data, dedicated thread and those are usually in the one inch by eight threads per inch size. And just to clarify, the one inch is the diameter. This is a one inch by eight threads per inch spindle, for instance. So it's one inch in diameter, eight threads per inch of uh, shaft here. While I have this in my hand, we'll go ahead and talk about this because these come in really, really handy too. This is a one and a quarter by eight threads per inch to one inch by eight threads per inch spindle adapter. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, if I go back to my example of Joel's lathe with a one inch by, or one and a quarter inch by eight threads per inch spindle, Say he doesn't have a threaded adapter that lets him use his chuck on that particular lathe, but he has this. This would actually let him use that one inch by eight threads per inch chuck on his one and a quarter inch spindle. Very, very handy device to have. These do come in different sizes as well, as do these. You'll find these uh, in a one and a quarter inch by eight. You'll find them in the one inch by eight, three quarter by 12. I think there's a three quarter by 10. There's even one that's five eighths uh, inside diameter with no threads at all that's designed to be used on your shopsmith machines. So there are inserts for a wide variety of machines in a wide variety of sizes. All righty, so we talked real briefly about your Morris taper, and those are typically, again, those are typically used in a lathe. But now we need to talk about what's called a Jacobs taper. And Joel, if you could zoom in just a little bit so we can get a little bit better view of this. This is your Jacobs taper. And you have to look really close to see that it has any kind of a taper to it at all. But it does have a, a minor taper to it. Jacob's tapers are usually used to hold a drill chuck, like this one right here. So in other words, these two pieces would go together like this. Then this could be inserted into your lathe and usually in your tailstock. Um, so that's, that's your, your Jacob's taper. Jacob's tapers come in two different sizes or two common sizes anyway, and that would be the Jacobs Taper number three, which is about uh, eight tenths, almost one inch in diameter at the large diameter. This is the Jacobs Taper three, which is 0.6 inches, so just over a half inch uh, in diameter at the large end here. Now, you may be asking yourself out there, how do I know that exactly? Well, on this particular one, it's very clearly labeled <laughs> that those are the sizes that this one is. Um, something else that's interesting about uh, Jacob's tapers that are normally used for drill chucks. And Joel, maybe you can zoom in enough to, to get a view of the inside here. I don't know if you can get that close or not. But if you look real close on the inside here, you'll see a set of threads. Now this particular one is a 3 8 diameter by 16 threads per inch. Again, we know that as, as true 
because it's part of the labeling on the, the taper here. So this is 3 8 by 16. Now I can hear all of you out there in Facebook land saying, well, why do I care about that? What's, what do I need threads on the inside of that taper for? Well, sometimes you may have a need to put this device or any other device for that matter that's on a Morse taper in the headstock of your lathe. And you might need to use it without any support from your tailstock. Now, in those situations, and I can think of, oh, turning bottle stoppers or uh, the handle for, say, an ice cream scoop or a pizza cutter, anything like that, you're going to have a point in time where you cannot have your tailstock supporting the material at the end. And as this thing is spinning in the headstock, it can sometimes kind of work itself loose a little bit. I see Joel back there nodding his head. He's probably experienced that very thing, as have I. And what happens is as this comes loose, it kind of starts to get all wonky on you, uh, and then bad things can happen. So with that threaded piece in there, and I, I have to apologize, I don't have a sample of one here with me, but you can use what's called a draw bar. And a draw bar is simply a piece of threaded you know, all rod, for instance, all thread, uh, that matches the size, usually 3 8 by 16, some I've seen quarter 20. But what you do is you just take your, your all thread, thread it right into those headstock, you secure the other end with, I usually use a washer and a wing nut. And what that does is that draws that tight, hence the name draw bar, it draws it up into the taper and holds it securely so that when you're turning out here at the very end, that piece doesn't want to get all crazy on you. So draw bars, a very handy little device, and that's why these are threaded on the inside. Again, you'll find them in a 3 8 by 16 or in a 1, one quarter inch by 20 threads per inch. Uh, and of course, you would cut that all thread to whatever length you need uh, as is appropriate for your particular lathe. All right, do we have any questions, Joel? Do we need to go back over anything? Have we gotten good views and pictures of it all? All right, well, as promised, uh, this uh, presentation was a little bit on the shorter side than some, but uh, that's okay. They don't all have to be half an hour long. Uh, so, folks, thank you very much for tuning in. Oh, we do have a question. Uh, on the Morse taper where you've got the threaded hole in there, um, sometimes when you use the knockout bar, it sticks in there and won't come out. Yes. Uh, for those of you that might not have heard Joel's question, uh, what Joel was asking about was um, when you're using the, the draw bar, and sometimes you need to use the knockout bar then to remove that taper from your headstock. What I have found to be the easiest thing to do is rather than use the draw bar, or the, uh, I'm sorry, the knockout bar, just tap gently on the end of your draw bar until it comes loose. And then you can take the whole thing apart, pull it all through, unscrew your, your draw bar, and you're right back in business. Does that help, Joel? All right, anything else? All right, well, folks, again, Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold everything. Can you get a Morris Taper 1 with a threaded end? I have an older lathe. Yes, as a matter of fact, you can. Uh, the, the question was, can I get a, three, or a number 1 taper with a th threaded end to use a draw bar? Yes, you can. Uh, that would be, uh, I'm certain, a quarter inch by 20 threads per inch. In fact, this one right here, this is our number one example, and you can see that it is indeed threaded for use with a draw bar. Uh, so this would be a quarter inch diameter by 20 threads per inch uh, thread pattern there. So yes, you can indeed get a number one taper with uh, a threaded end for a draw bar. Again, remember on that older machine that we're talking about here, measure the opening, where that insert or where that Morse taper is going, going to go. If it's a half inch in diameter or roughly a half inch, you need the number one taper. All right, anything else? 
All right, it looks like we're all good. So again, folks, thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll see you next Saturday. Thank you.